Hey everybody, welcome back to The Dice Tower. My name is Zeke Garcia. And I'm Camilla. Today we're taking a look at Daybreak right here. This is a new cooperative game from the creator of Pandemic, mm -hmm. Matt Leacock. And he has a co-designer, Matteo uh, Menapache or Menap Menapasi. Um, so in this one, it's a co-op as well, like I said, and Matt Leacock is known for cooperative games. Uh, you are trying to reach Drawdown, which means that you are taking care of all of the carbon emissions that yes. you, as a player in this game representing a nation or a part of the world, are putting out. Um, and so if you can curb that and take care of it and reach this drawdown, then you win the game, all of you, together. If after six rounds you haven't done that, or the temperature rises too much, or like four other things that can go wrong. Community crisis. Uh, yeah, there's crises. like a bunch of different ways you can you can lose. Um, if one of those happens, then you've lost. Let's go ahead and take a look at how the game works. I'll show you on the board here a few of the moving parts, and we'll come on back. We'll tell you what we think of it. Here we're going to be taking a look at the game setup for two players. Each player will have one of these boards. In my case, I will be representing the United States, as denoted here. And in a two-player game, the other player is China. We begin with a setup that is denoted on the setup on the back here of the card, as well as some cards that we can put anywhere, but they go above our board here. Uh, we've got uh, several other pieces of information to account for. Resilience, the demands of our population, dirty and clean energy here, as well as other uh, effects that we are ideally hoping to get rid of, to reduce. We've got the board set up again for two players with the numbers of oceans and trees and all of the trackers at the beginning of their, their uh, tracks. And uh, our objective in the game is to reach drawdown. Reaching drawdown means that we are going to be consuming and getting rid of the carbon in the atmosphere and we're going to be doing that more than we produce, right? Uh, we are going to be reducing that by uh, lowering our uh, output of dirty energy here and everything else, as well as increasing then the trees and the uh, the water, the oceans, and they're going to be consuming some of that carbon. So if we reach drawdown, meaning we don't have any left over after we've consumed it all, then we can survive one more crisis fa uh, phase and then we can win the entire thing. We have also those six rounds listed over here in order to do that. So that's the objective. I'm going to be taking you through what a round looks like, and hopefully that gives you enough of an idea so you understand how to play the game. So I've already done my setup, which is denoted right here, and then I can flip this over and it's a player A, so we're going to be using this to walk us through what's going on. Again, just a very brief and, and removed overview. We start with the global phase in which we add crisis cards. And we are going to add those right here from this deck equal to whatever it tells us along the side over here. So at the bottom, we're adding three of these. So we would draw three. One of them is a forecast crisis, so we know what it's going to be. The others are face down. We're going to have to deal with all of them, but we know about one of them, all right? So this one says it's going to affect, in this corner it says everyone, okay? And it lets us know what's going on. Every player loses one infrastructure resilience, which is the same as that symbol there. That's what's going to happen. It also lets us know that we can protect one player for each blue card that's tucked here. So blue just means every. Uh, so we are aware of that and we can try to reduce that. These we don't know about, like I said. Secondly, start global project here means we come over to this deck. We are going to draw two of these cards and we will select as a group one global project that we would like to work on. These are uh, radical technologies that are going to help us make the game easier and push towards that drawdown. So we can select which one we're working on. We would set that over here and uh, generally we tuck cards under this in order to reach its development and once it has enough attached to it, that technology is available to us and we can use it for the rest of the game. We can have up to four of these, we can even replace one with a newer one after, you know, the fourth round. Or we can just not, not work on one anymore if we're happy with what's there. So that's the idea there. We've got global solar radiation management and we've got 
global offshoring agreement here, each one doing something specific. So we do, okay, let's do that. We get rid of the other one. And that is it for the global phase of the turn. Now we're going to go to the local phase of the turn. Each player is going to draw five local project cards from this deck. And again, this is reduced if we happen to have too many uh, of these uh, communities in crisis. If you have four of those, I'm going to draw one fewer. If I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those, I draw two fewer. Okay. And then these are going to just go down here. You just sort of play them out and you will be able to use them in step two here to play cards, to take actions in any order you want to. My point being, they are open so players can help each other out looking at these cards. For now, I am going to set them over here so we can discuss them uh, and you can see what's going on. So there we go. These are the cards I have in my hands, basically. And my options are uh, threefold. I can do one of three things with each of these cards, okay? Uh, or basically during this step of my turn. I can take an action. And that action is listed right on the cards above my player board here. So for example, clean energy R&D, I could discard a card and then draw three and keep one of those. Uh, and below that, if there is a limit, it'll mention it. In this case, it says each round uh, is once per each of these tags with the light bulb there. And they all these tags have meaning, of course. So things I can do, I can activate a card. I can take a card and tuck it behind another one in order to utilize those tags. In this case, for example, Clean Electricity Plan says I can discard a card and I gain clean energy for each of these symbols. Well, now I have two symbols. So if I do that ability, I get two clean energy, which I would put right here. Boom, boom, okay? Uh, the other option then would be putting it in front. I can use one of these to put that in front of something else, like this, anywhere I want to, and that gives me a new ability. And you can even do the ability on something and then cover it and use the ability on the new one. Now, again, if it does not list a limit like this one, you simply need to be able to justify and pay for the ability. In this case, I have to discard a card. So obviously, once I'm out of cards, I can no longer do that. Um, so I could do this, like I said, and I am going to activate that ability. District Heating, it lets me get rid of one of these symbols here. So I can get rid of that, and this is going to this. If it's brown like this, it counts as uh, emissions, basically, and I'm I'm reducing those emissions by getting rid of that symbol. This one happens to say uh, that it requires two of these symbols. So I actually can't really do it yet, but let's pretend I did this as well. All right, there we go. So that I'm I can justify having done that, and then it says limit once per round. Anything that says limit once per round or anything like that, they recommend that you use one of the uh, cubes that we'll be using later to track how many times you've done it. So I've, I've done that already. And this is all free form. The players can do these things at whatever rate they want to, whenever they want to. I might now say, uh, activate this one here. It says, give one card from your hand to another player. I might say, okay, here you go. China, you need that card there. It's gonna help you out. Um, maybe then I'll uh, cover this up and do this, draw a card. Uh, it says limit only during local stage each round. I Okay, that's fine, I'm doing that. And so on and so on. This one's pretty interesting here. I can go ahead and uh, I'm gonna cover this up and do this ability where I get rid of this and I get two clean energy. There's a bunch of these energy tokens here, so I would do one and two clean energy, like so. Once everyone is done taking these kinds of actions and you've used all these cards, tucking them behind, playing them, discarding them for a cost, giving them away in, a, in some cases, then we are going to go to the emissions phase in which we are going to check the demand. Uh, this is the demand up here. We are going to uh, make sure that everybody can uh, has enough energy for their communities. And this is going to move up in one second, but right now I have enough energy, so that's fine. We're going to add carbon to the recent emissions by counting up all of the um, brown tokens out here, right? So 8, 4 and 4 is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 in total. You have the number there, so I could have just done 11 and 4. That would have been fine. 
and then we are going to sequester carbon. What does that mean? Well, we figure out what the total is. In this case, 15. Let's say China has 12. Uh, so our total then would be my 15 and their 12, and it's all reduced by these oceans out here and these trees out on the main board. We're going to put a matching number out there, okay? Uh, so my 12 is taken care of by these. Uh, we said China has, uh, what was it, my 15 rather, is taken care of by these. China had 12, they can get rid of three, so there's another nine left over. And we are going to represent that with these cubes and these tokens. There are nine of these. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, like so. Okay? This is now going to, because it cannot be taken care of, it's going to move to this thermometer, so let's focus on that again. I've gone ahead and sequestered the carbon emissions on the trees and the oceans here. And the leftovers go up here in the recent emissions blue line, okay? Just for visual clarity, uh, I did it down here in the corner, but there you go. That's where it's supposed to go. Once we've done that, then that is going to move here to the thermometer. And that is after sequester carbon, adjust thermometer. The five would go there. The other four would go here. Now, based on the number of players... Each of these bands can only take so much until the temperature moves up one, okay? In this case, we are at two players, so this second column becoming complete would do it. Meaning if there had been two more carbon emissions, then this one then also goes to five, and there's one more that goes up to the next one, and we immediately then can cover this up like so, and the temperature has risen, i.e. bad news for us. Uh, now, once that is done, we've adjusted the thermometer, we're going to go into the crisis phase, in which we are going to resolve planetary effects. That happens over here along the side. It tells you how many times you have to roll this die here. This die is going to trigger effects on the board based on what you roll. So, let's see. If I roll that, uh, we are going to trigger this one over here, which is off the board, and I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to say we rolled this one. We would therefore move this once. You have to roll this die once for every temperature band we have here. So right now it would be ones. If we had all three of these first ones, you'd have to roll it three times, and every roll moves the matching symbol once to the right. If it's blank, nothing happens. If it has one of these balance symbols, the bad thing printed above it is going to take place. In this case here, uh, plus two emissions that go to the thermometer per player. So we would get another four immediately, and that might even add a new band. In this case, boom, another four would do that. Uh, and it's only one roll because we only have one band, so we're good. Okay, that's the idea. Uh, and then we're going to resolve the crisis cards in which we deal with these bad things. We flip them over, and they are going to make a few things go haywire. All right. Once this is dealt with, and we've done all these, again, reducing sometimes how badly they hurt us by our community's resilience, which are these tokens here that go at the bottom of our boards, okay? Then we do the final step, which is growth, where we check for victory. If we reached drawdown, the round counter here would have been flipped over that says drawdown. And that means we can, if we can survive one more crisis, we're going to be, uh, we're going to win. So we check for that, if it's an end game victory. Uh, we're going to advance the round mark, and then we increase the energy demand by one for, for the US, it says. Each place has a different amount, and it shows you right here on the board how much you have to increase it by. In my case, just one. And I want to make sure that I'm making enough energy to satisfy my communities, because if this ever goes above that, then I need to take uh, these communities and crisis tokens equal to the difference. you got to watch out for that. This is one way in which you can lose the game if you have too many. Uh, if you have too much temperature increasing, that also means you lose the game. And you're trying to... Obviously, if you, if you go too many rounds as well. If you don't do it by the end of the sixth round, you also lose the game. Uh, you win by, like I said, reaching drawdown, finishing out that crisis, and still being okay. Then you win the entire thing. And then you go back to the top and you do it again. That is a breakdown of how the game works. Um, and hopefully that gives you enough of an idea so you understand what is happening in Daybreak. Let's go ahead and go back up top. All right, so that is the game. Um, I will start by saying I'm a big fan of Pandemic. It's one of my favorite mm -hmm. games of all time. 
And this is not pandemic. Right. I think a lot of people, that's unfortunate maybe, it comes maybe as a consequence of being um, uh, a tremendously famed designer or having a game that is tremendously well known. As well but, as so many iterations of it, yeah. you know? I mean, it, it kind of took off. And so, yeah, he's never gonna, a little bit. He's never going to have a game design that comes out that is not compared to Pandemic. It's my point, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. Because it's ubiquitous. I mean, it's so well known. But this is not that. This is very, very yeah. different. Mm -hmm. This is very different from Pandemic. Um, and I'll also go ahead and say that my absolute favorite thing in this game is that card play. The card play oh, in this so game. It, there, I love... I'm, I mean, I'm a big fan of card games anyway with special abilities and all that jazz, but... I love a giant deck of cards, which all have different abilities and different combinations of the symbols, the tags, and the thing you can manipulate. And every round, you get this hand of cards, and you're like, hmm, mm -hmm. I trigger this one, then I cover it, then I trigger the new one, then I tuck a card behind this one, and... And right, and I, I, I'm a huge fan of multi-use cards, and yeah. I think this game does it really well. Are you taking it for that symbol to boost the action, or are you yeah. using it for the action and comboing it with the symbols you already have? Mm -hmm. Also, sequence of play. Are you going to use that card and then cover it so you're actually getting two plays oh out of gosh. that one yeah. column this round because it was a limited uh, card before, and now you're resetting that? Or are you using it for the symbols on one of your community, not community crisis, your uh, project plannings yes. or your upcoming crisis that you know is going to happen at the end of the round. So the cards are multi-use in multiple different places on the board, yeah. which just kind of compounds that decision um, space of that, which I really, really like. I agree. I really like that. That's... Like I said, by far kind of my favorite part. Um, I think it's really interesting also because all the cards are unique in something mm -hmm. like this. Um, but they each have a QR code on it as well. And if you scan that QR code, it takes you to a website that then it describes that card. Um, how to use it, what it means, what it stands for, what it can do, that kind of stuff. So it goes into this breakdown of the card. And I like that because it's not another rule book that I'm pulling out. Right. You know, it's right there. You have your cell phone on you anyway. Scan the QR code. Oh, this is what it is? Cool. It takes you right to it. You're not searching through a book trying to figure it out and arguing what the card does. I think it's a really good implementation for a really big deck of cards where they're all unique. And they're pretty simple, to be fair. I think it's, yeah. it's well, you know... Um well understood and well mm -hmm. explained. It's easy to grasp the game. I just think it's like an extra step because I assume this is a game made to appeal to folks that are maybe not big board gamers. Right, I think and so, And that's yeah. an extra step above and beyond and an appreciated one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I agree with that. Um, this game also have a few other, has a few other things that I enjoy. We'll talk about those things first, I, I, I'm thinking, and then we'll talk about things maybe we consider to be drawbacks. Okay, for sure. Um, one of them I would say which I appreciate is the, the way in which you can scale the difficulty in the game. So in the back of the rule book, they give you difficulty settings for the game. And they generally break down to how many trees begin on the board and how many oceans begin on the board. So there's setups, you know, for that. Like you can play easy, standard, hard, whatever. But you can also... Do whatever you want to with that. Right, you can. If easy mode is still whooping you and you're not okay with that, mm -hmm. then put out more trees and more oceans on the board. As you know what starting. I mean? Just keep t keep tweaking it. And I love that it's right there and set up and then that's yeah, it. It's not forget something it. to remember. It's not, oh, draw two cards instead of one. You're not changing the rules of play. I really appreciate that. I agree. The, the ease of scaling. Um, it even comes with a little deck of cards, which has more variability as far mm -hmm. as difficulty goes, but those all make the game harder. So, Which I didn't need. I didn't feel like that was necessary, but <laughs> I guess that's something you can throw it in there if you get really, yeah. really good at this game. Yeah. So I like that. What do you got as far as positives? One thing I really liked was uh, the asymmetry of the different, they're not factions, of the different regions of the world. Yeah. You know, China, U.S., rest of the world, and Europe. Um, I, I think... Similar to what I said with the difficulty scaling just being the one setup in the beginning, the asymmetry is the same. It's how you're setting your board up, and then that's it. While well, you, uh, the carbon that you, or the what is the population growth each round is different as well. Yes. But you each have an individual player aid. So yes. one side of that player aid tells you how to set up your nation. The other side is the round structure, and in that round structure 
it is specific for your region of the world. You know, so if I'm playing US, uh, it's only going up one. If you're playing China, it's going up two. And it says that on your individual player aid. So I really like that the asymmetry is there, but it's very well integrated in the game that you are not distracted by it. Or right. it's like, you're not so asymmetric that you're playing, well, you are playing your own game, we'll get to that in a minute, but you're not playing, nobody else can help you with your faction. You don't, yeah, you don't need you to know? like teach one person how to play their part of the right. world and be like, okay, now you, Timmy, I need to show you how to Forget play China. Yeah. No, it's all the same yeah. with tweaks to represent real world mm -hmm. scenarios. Yes. This area of the world has more population growth. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. The U.S. has more emissions that come from cars, i.e. you have more little car tokens on your player right. board. Yeah, it's interesting the way they handle it. I really like it. I think that. it's pretty smooth. It's, yeah. it's a little flavor of asymmetry without being a lot of overhead. It's just yeah. very well integrated into the game and simplified. Yeah. Um, so I got one other thing, two, two other things I want to talk about, which are going to be slight negatives. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to mention before we jump into that? I just want to say one thing. I like the the length of this game. Yeah. I was really surprised, especially at two players, set up, play, tear down, all under an hour. Two if you players know how to very play. fast. It is. When you get up to the four-player count, that was a little bit longer of a game. Um, I'm a little bit of two that. minds when it comes to the higher player count. I'll agree with you carte blanche that a two-player game is incredibly fast mm -hmm. and you don't lose anything in my opinion I agree. two players. Yeah. Um, so I certainly recommend this game at two. I think it's a fantastic two-player mm -hmm. game, okay? Mm -hmm. I'll modify that statement a little bit if we're talking about four because, and I think we're ready to jump into this, Some of it, mm -hmm. the game has a, is a very, very, which is a weird thing to say but uh, about a Matt Leacock design, but it's it's got quite a bit of multiplayer solitaire in it. Like, <laughs> it's a cooperative game. You are helping each other, but you know you can give cards. You can pass energy sometimes if, if your cards allow you to. But you sort of do phase one, phase two, da da da. Everybody gets dealt their five or fewer cards or whatever, and then you go, okay, everybody got it. Right. I I feel like and that's it. Like for a yeah. while, every now and then, I like look up. I'm like, does anybody have a card they can give me for this thing? Right. Okay, back to this. For a cooperative game, that was odd, and that did yeah. catch me off guard. Um, there is discussion to be had, but it's more, hey, can you take care of this crisis this round? Yeah. Can anyone tuck one? Okay, fine, I can tuck one. No, none of us can? Okay, then be aware of that. Or, hey, guys, I'm turning over one, something like that. So it's more statements, really quick little snippets, rather than it is, like, full cooperation. So, so it did feel more multiplayer solitaire for a cooperative game. Um, I don't necessarily dislike that, but I think what you were talking about in the transition there, in a higher player count, I think you see that even more so. Yes, and the game will be longer because you've got yeah. four people doing stuff, you know. Right. Um, so it's going to be a little bit longer. It's not It's not that a four-player game is twice as long as a two-player game. That's not the no, case. No. Because people are doing things simultaneously. Yeah. It just becomes more apparent yeah. and a little bit longer that you are sort of each doing your own thing with minimal communication and with the bulk of the up to six rounds in the game being kind of silent, you know, right. kind of doing my own, like, puzzling things out. Yeah. Um, which is weird. I don't necessarily, you know, give it a big thumbs down for that. I think it's something to be aware of. Right. I think it was unexpected. And I, I wouldn't even say that it overstays its welcome at those higher player counts. It just, like you said, becomes more apparent. And so it's something to be aware of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. And then my other thing would be that I think the difficulty, if you don't kind of nip it in the bud early in the game... It can snowball. Yeah, you can lose in round three out of six. Yeah, it feels like you're like. I know, I've been there. You know, yeah, if you don't quite get going, yeah, you are just drowning the whole time. Um, I don't know if that's purposeful for, for the sake of pushing the theme of the game. Maybe so. It just feels like that climb towards drawdown. Uh, it, which is interesting, and it is nice to round after round see you being able to like put out fewer emissions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It feels good, but man, if you don't catch it quick, it can it can get out of control. Those, the fact that as the temperature rises, you are rolling the die more, and it is nasty and uncontrollable, yeah. and you are putting out more crisis yeah. cards, which of which you get to see one. 
Uh, yeah. Some Unless of those. Built that engine in yeah. there. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I do think uh, to that, you can lose the game early. Yeah. You know, and uh, I mean, there's multiple times in all the games that I've lost, it's like, oh, we're going to lose this round unless this one specific thing happens, which that thing's not going to happen. Right, you know, if we happen to get no community crisis, then I might survive one more round, but we'll definitely lose next round. So you kind right. of see it coming a little bit early uh, because of that snowball. I think for me, my, and, and I'm kind of nitpicking on this one, but I find the carbon, the carbon counting comparison just a little bit fiddly. When you have the square fives and the four ones, then you have to add in sometimes and then subtract from what's out here on the board and then put the others over here. Here, it just always kind of halts the game a little bit and you know results in a couple of fallen cubes and oh whoops soup oh, oh hold on okay it just gets a little fiddly so that does kind of interrupt the play for me a little bit I don't love that part I think I like it yeah. thematically and what it does for the game but actually the execution of it grinds a bit and that's another uh, reason why I would recommend it at two players actually because the numbers balloon up right. with four people. You know what I mean? If you're dealing with four people, it's like, okay, you get to that stage, like emissions, 14, 22, 10, 15, and it's like, okay. Right. And then you're putting it on the trees the and trees. putting it on the ocean. That's another thing I recommend. Do not get cutesy with where you put those trees and the oceans. Right. They're no, like, no. you can put them anywhere. Like, you know, they're going to go all together yep. right uh -huh. here. Where I do not miss, oh, oh, there's a little tree over there. We forgot about that one. Don't get right. cute with that stuff. Put it somewhere you're going to catch it. Um, so with two, the math gets easier. Yes. I agree. If you're playing yeah. especially with four people, those are large numbers. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah. It's All right, simple arithmetic. but minus this, minus, and then that goes here. And, and, yeah. and again, as it says in the rule book, you put it on the actual trees and ocean and then do the excess, then clear it off. Just do the math. Use a calculator. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I agree with you there, especially a higher player counts. So there we go. Those are the mm -hmm. big ones. Um, having said all of that, and we gave you some pros and we gave you some cons, I really like this game. I had a blast, and I still have a blast. It's one of those games that as soon as I'm done playing, not be, not that it's that short, it's fairly punchy, but it's not that short. As soon as I'm done playing, I'm like, I kind of want to keep playing the card part yeah. of it. You okay. know what I mean? I kind of want to play one more time. Just, just can I just get five more cards and and try one more round? <laughs> you know what I mean. That part of it is super fun. Yeah. You have to be, I think, someone who enjoys multiplayer. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, what is what you call multi-use cards? Multi-use multi cards, yeah. cards. You have to be someone who enjoys multi-use cards, mm -hmm. and that feeling of creating combos, right? The symbols or the text or you know sequencing those things. But if you like that stuff in games. I think you're going to have a good time. Mm -hmm. You know, that is the the meat and potatoes of this game is that system. It is a fun system. It is. It really um, is. So for me, yeah, it's a winner. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, this one's going to get a nice, strong 8 out of 10 from me. Um, loses a little bit for me, Multiplayer Solitaire. It's, like I said, the snowball thing's a little weird. Um, the Yeah, a couple of things. Hold it back. A couple of minor things. Uh, but... I enjoy that central gear, that central mechanism quite a bit, and I'm happy to play it because of it. So, 8 out of 10. This one, it gets a small bump for me up to 8.5, and that is because what you were talking about when the game is done, I'm still thinking about it. Yeah. I'm still puzzling, what did I do wrong? And that's leading to the discussion. So in the game, you had that multiplayer solitaire, but at the end of the game, I'm so excited to show you the engine that I built. I was like, oh, see, I went too heavy here. I think I, I did this. If I'd done this instead, oh, uh, maybe I should, oh, oh, you had that? I didn't know you had that. Oh my gosh, next time, yeah. let's make sure we communicate. You see your mistakes, you get excited about it. Yeah. I like the gameplay. Every play has had a discussion afterward where we talk about not just what we should have done, but hey, next time we're doing this. We're mm -hmm. already talking about playing it again, and we're thinking about it and, and already just enjoying that puzzle nature of it. And so I think that it is one that the more I've played it, the more I've appreciated that, and I feel myself growing with the game. Sure. And I, I just, I, I really like that. So for me, it's, a, it's an excellent game. It's an 8.5. Well, there you go. Excellent game indeed. That is a seal of excellence, folks, an 8.5. And that's going to do it for us uh, and our coverage here of Daybreak. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Z Garcia. And I'm Camilla. Reach for that drawdown.